Hi guys, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, friends, for our very first streaming safari. Now, a couple of things before we really get started. Just be aware, this is our first time doing it, so we might be changing it along as we go. And we did have some important information come through from the governor last night. So we will be making a statement later on today. So be sure to check out our Facebook page for the most up-to-date information as we go and we make those changes as we get the information. Now let's go ahead and get started. My name is Kylie and I'm joined with a few of my friends here. I have Zookeeper Cameron over here and I have Zookeeper Megan. And as you can see, we have a few of our friends over here. The girls will be coming back around, but this here is Ringo. He's a juvenile blue and gold macaw. And these ladies running around behind me are emus. So today we're gonna to be learning about adaptations. That's an interesting and pretty big word for some of you. It just means a change on their body to help an animal survive where they live. So we're gonna be talking about how while they're both birds, you're gonna notice that they are pretty different. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's start with something that all birds have. Feathers. Now, the emu feathers over here almost look like fur. They come down. You'll notice that where they live in Australia, they're not going to be flying. They're a pretty big bird to be able to fly, so they can't. Their feathers act more like fur to help give them a nice temperature protection when it's either really hot or when it gets cool at night. Ringo over here has some very long, colorful feathers that help him fly. He is a parrot. It's probably the more like the bird you would expect to see as opposed to the girls here. So we'll take a look at their feathers here. This is a big ostrich feather, very similar to that of our emu friends here. And then we have our parrot feathers. Ah, yeah, good hi. job, yeah. So when you expect a bird to be able to fly, do you think a wing with these kind of feathers would do much good? I don't know, it looks kind of floppy to me. Or feather that's nice and firm. And you'll notice that all these little feather filaments here are going in nice and curved together so they catch the wind better. Ostriches and emus, where it's really hot, they don't get to fly, but they need to stay cool. So having these nice, loosey, downy feathers here help do that. It's pretty neat. Now the other thing is, good job, let's talk about color. Ringo here is pretty easy to spot here in the desert. But where he comes from in South America, he's coming from the jungles where there's a lot of plants and a lot of trees that he can go and blend into. So his colors help him to camouflage. And he can stand out when he needs to. He's doing a good job talking. <laughs> now he's making noise. These girls here, you might be able to hear it. It's a little bit harder. They've been making noise too. It almost sounds like a bongo drum. It's called booming. And because their noise has to be low and in the forest, because again, you can't hide up in a tree for them, their sounds have to be a little bit lower, so that way predators can't hear them if they're looking for them. A macaw is pretty easy to hear, as you can tell. And they can be heard up to a couple miles away, all screaming together in the forest. These girls do nice and low, booming, that drumming noise to be able to talk really, really loud. Now their colors help them blend in too. They're camouflaging in the grasslands and some of the loose tree areas throughout Australia. Really, really neat. Now the other thing that birds are pretty well known for are their beaks. Now this whole time you've noticed that they've been getting some nice treats here. Well, look at how they're eating. It's a little bit different. A macaw's beak adaptation is that curve to be able to go and crunch those nuts up really well. The girls here have been picking out pellets, as you can see, one at a time, nice and slow, because their beak comes to a point and it's flat. They're able to pick things up a lot easier. To try this at home, go ahead and make your hand into a V shape right here. You can pick up maybe a crayon or a pen, really easy. It's a little bit harder to do it in a fist. But imagine you have to go and break open a nut. Go ahead and squeeze your hand together in a V-shape again. Oh, do you think you could break a nut open by doing that? Probably not. But squeeze your hand into a fist, and you can squeeze it a lot harder. So his beak can squeeze very, very hard to crack open very, very tough nuts. These girls are able to pick off little 
insects and grains that they find on the ground that flow around. So they're able to eat really different things. Now finally, let's talk about feet, which for him are important, but for these girls are super important because that's their only way to get around. They can't fly. So Parrot's feet, you'll see here on Megan's hand, have two toes in the front and two toes in the back. That's a pretty fancy word. It's called zygodactyl. Do you think you guys can say that at home? Let's try it again. Zygodactyl. It's pretty neat. And all it means is that they're able to clamp onto a branch really easily. So they can go and fly around and hop from branch to branch. Let's take a look at these girls' feet. They only have three toes here, and you can see they're pretty big. See them up against the size of my hand here? That's a big foot, and they have some pretty sharp claws. While these girls do have wings, they're pretty small and tucked in there. So their feet are how they get around, and they're big, they're able to run pretty fast with them, and if they need to, they can kick out at predators who might be trying to harm them. So those are really, really important for them. All right, now you can also look at their legs. Ringo's legs are covered in fur, but these guys have nice long legs to be able to get through the grasses really easily and even the mud. Sometimes where they live, it can flood and they'll have to go and go across these large areas of water. So that's a really easy way to help keep their footing and not have to worry about the feathers getting dirty. Pretty neat. So you've been hearing about these adaptations. What do you think? we try and make our own bird adaptations. Here's where that art project comes in. Hey guys, do you want to come and make some birds with me? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and head over here and we're going to go and do an art project. Now this is the part where you get to go and follow along at home. We're going to go and imagine our very own birds. And we'll put Ringo down there. All right guys, so I got some art projects for us. So as we go and imagine the birds in our head, let's see if we can give them some really unique adaptations to really help them survive wherever you want your bird to live. So I think I'm gonna be using clay for mine. What do you think, Cameron? I'm probably gonna draw. All right, well I got some pencils and some paper here for you. Thank you. All right, what do you think? You wanna make a nice? I'll think, yeah, I'll use the pipe. Thing. All right. Okay, so I think for mine, oh, I'm gonna be doing this. I'll let them, we'll check back on them in a minute. I think my bird might live in the water. I'm getting a lot of rain here in the desert lately and it's made me think about birds that live in the water. Well, obviously a lot of ducks have the feet to paddle, but I'm like, why not use their wings? I think that's a good idea. So I'm gonna go and make my bird have paddle wings. So I'm gonna start molding here. Now guys, I'm not a great artist here and that's okay, but what you guys can do is just start making your birds. You can draw, you can go and use pipe cleaner, you can do whatever you want to at home. Hey, you'll notice my bird might not look like a bird that you think of and maybe your bird might not look like a bird that you quite have in mind that's okay keep practicing and remember they're all different it's adaptations so i have the body right here let's talk about those wings so i think i'm going to give him blue wings because he's in the water obviously i'm going to go and give him wings with paddles i think let's go I'm a little big there what do you think, Ringo? He's hanging out with us. Using those feet, those zygodactyl feet. That's a fun word to say, friends. If you practice it at school, I think your teachers would be pretty impressed. You think so? I think so. Zygodactyl. Now, while you're going and making your bird at home, however you choose to, you need to go and also think about what you want to tell me about your bird. Because, at the end of this, ask your parents if you can upload a photo. Post it right down there in the comments because I want to see it. Yeah, you do too, huh, Ringo? He's excited to see your birds too. Write up a little paragraph and tell me why you think that your bird's adaptations will help. Now, of course, my bird does need a beak. I'm going to go and give him a nice round bill because that would be good at scooping up water like a spoon. So I'm gonna give him a spoon. Now, what's really fun, there's actually a bird called a spoonbill. If you wanna look up a really silly looking bird, ask your parents to look up a spoonbill. Now, if you wanna look up an even weirder looking bird, ask 
them to go and look up a shoe bill. Can you imagine having a shoe on your face? Well, they do. They're really awesome birds though, and I think they really need to learn. They're not as pretty as you, Ringo, that's for sure. How are you guys doing? Coming along with yours pretty well? Pretty good. Alright. the best adaptation. Oh, the best adaptation, huh? I like <laughs> it. Okay. There you go. Well, he's kind of looking like a bird, but guys, I gotta be <laughs> honest, I think I'm gonna keep on being a zookeeper instead of a sculptor, <laughs> but that's okay. Alright. I'm coming along here. I dig it. I dig it. Anybody have a bird that digs? Maybe your bird needs to dig. What adaptations would you give a bird that has to dig? I have that's one that's going to be too. digging. So. Yeah. Oh, I like oh. it. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish up here in a moment. Now, by the way, friends, when you're watching this, if you do have any questions, feel free to type them into the comments. And if we get anything good while we're waiting, I'll try and answer them here live, but it's okay. I'll always try and get back to them after as well. We love answering questions about animals. It's why we do this a lot of the time. So if you have questions about animals, even if we're not live, we're able to go and answer those questions. So even if, you have, if you have something about an animal that you want to know about, feel free to send us a comment or even email us. We're always happy to do that for you. All right. Need a few more minutes, or are we just about done? I'm just about done. Okay. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead with mine. Again, mine is gonna be in the water. Guys, I don't know if he'll float, but I think he's pretty neat. So my adaptation is you see how his wings come down here? I made him oars on his wings to be able to scoop that water because I think paddling with your feet. Doesn't get you very far, but big oars like a boat can help. Now he has a nice big round bill to be able to scoop up that water like a spoon and a little tail. We have a question. Oh. How old is the oldest lion that we have on property? Right now, that's actually a really great question. We have two girls that are coming up on their 21st birthdays. Now that's actually pretty impressive because lions who live in human care typically only live to be about 15 to 20 on average. And in their natural environment, you're looking at about eight to 12 on average. So those two girls are definitely your seniors, but they get spoiled so much because of it. All right. He's showing off his wings over there. He is, those are some great wing adaptations you got there, Ringo. Now you'll notice that his feathers look a little bit funny right now. That's because he's still got some baby feathers. He's not quite two years old yet, and he doesn't quite know what feathers are for yet. So he's learning how to take care of those feathers as they grow in, and he's learning how to groom himself. Pretty impressive. All right, Cameron, why don't you tell us about your adaptations? All right, my bird will be living underground. Um, to live underground and to maneuver underground, it has to have shovel-like wings, shovel-like feet, and also along, along its beak, it has something that can break through solid rock. So this is my bird here. Oh, I like yeah, you got the bird, right? <laughs> Almost looks like a dinosaur though. That's right. I think Aren't so. dinosaur pretty much? Exactly, <laughs> because they did come from that. That's pretty awesome. So that's my bird. I don't have a name, so could someone help me with the name eventually? I think so. Feel free. Yeah. All right, Megan, what kind of bird are you having over here? Uh, so my bird uh, lives near the water, but not quite in the water okay. like yours. So it has these nice big flat feet for walking across the tops of like uh, reeds or lily pads or something. And it has this long beak to be able to stick its beak down in the water and get its food out. Nice, nice. You don't want to get those feathers wet if you don't no. have to, right? <laughs> yeah, a little, a little dainty bird. I love it. Right. Well, all right, friends, I think this just about wraps it up. But again, I want to go and make some announcements for us. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us for our first streaming safari. This is going to mean more to us because as of last night, there were some announcements that came in from the state that's going to change our operations around here a little bit. So make sure you're following our Facebook page for some of the most up to date. Now, when it comes to these streaming safaris, we do hope to continue in the future. However, we might be changing our platform a little bit. So just be prepared for that. We might be sending out links or pre-recording. We're gonna see what works as we learn, because this is new for us too. 
And then when it comes to the staffing here and how we're going to be having our operations continue, keep updated for more information because we want to go and post that out. As soon as we get the information, we'll pass it on to you. Looks like we got a question. We have a question and a comment. So for Cameron's bird, Dreyfus the bird was a suggested name. I like that. <laughs> and then Ashley would like to know who the youngest lion or lions are. Lions. We actually have multiple ones because we have a litter of five. Ah! Megan, do you want to go and tell us about our family? Ah! Okay, so we do have uh, there are five cubs in the litter. The boy is named Winston, and the girls are named Brody, Chumley, Elsa, and Scarlet. And they are just about to turn five years old. We do have a birthday mm -hmm. coming yep. up soon. Just next month. I was gonna say, what is their birthday? April 1st. They are <laughs> April Fool's <laughs> Bees. Yeah. Alright, any other questions, gang? Hi. No, got a lot of talking over here, hi. but I love it. But hi. <laughs> well, alright. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us. It looks like this is gonna wrap it up for now. Again, stay in touch, ask us those questions, keep learning guys, and again, share, share, share to help us get the word out about us and how you can help. Thank you so much and have a good day guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.